This is the Northampton Conservation Commission for the 24th of August, 2023. The commission is a group of unpaid volunteers who work to protect the natural environment of Northampton. We are concerned with the eight interests defined in the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act. Our duties also include open space acquisition and management. We operate in a way that's consistent with open meeting law requirements. All meeting dates, times, and agendas are posted in advance. And we invite public comment during our meetings. However, we ask the public to limit our comments to issues that are within our purview. Today's agenda includes a uh, continuation for a notice of intent for a septic system replacement within bordering land subject to flooding. Uh, this at Cross Path Road. A request for determination of applicability to determine if removal and management of non native invasive plant species is subject to the Wetlands Act or the City Wetlands Ordinance. This at uh, Bridge Road by Lathrop Communities, and a notice of intent for improvements to existing driveway, creating uh, eight space parking area to serve the Mineral Hills Greenway and related stormwater improvements, uh, this uh, at uh, uh, Turkey Hill Road. Uh, we also have a request for a certificate of compliance on Blackberry Lane. Uh, so first up, the announcement that the uh, meeting is being recorded, has been issued. Uh, next is to see if there's any general public comment that doesn't have to do with a case that we're reviewing today. And if not, uh, then next step is approval of minutes, but we didn't have any minutes to review this week. So, uh, I, I will have a lot catch up next time. I posted them all on the website already, but I neglected to send them out. So send them along. we're yes. pretty much okay. current. So we'll go to the first case, uh, notice of intent for septic system replacement within bordering land subject to flooding on Cross Path Road. Um, who's here to speak to that? Hi, um, I'm Candace, and this is my husband, Jonathan. I lost my voice. I apologize. So he's going to um, just answer the technical stuff, and I will read my statement. Is that what I should do? Um, um, sure. We, we've, read, we've read the materials in advance, uh, but we always like to have the applicant uh, present a summary. Great. So mm -hmm. first, I should say that we feel very lucky to have purchased 128 Cross Path. It's an absolutely stunning and beautiful property. Um, we've lived in Northampton for 10 years, uh, going on a little bit further, and we are adamant that this property remain a farm. Um, we have a plan in place to foster and grow the property. Um, it's very important for us both to say that we respect the land and its history. Uh, we've already started working with um, Regenerative Design Group and Jono uh, to come up with a plan for the property, such as like long-term plants like elderberries, blueberries, and pawpaw trees. A lot of these things have already started. We planted a fall, um, a spring cover crop to help um, bring the land back. Um, regeneration of the land is really important to us. The soil was very overworked, so we have found um, some great advice from him and already started that practice and seen some amazing differences with the land already, including drainage, the soil quality, uh, wildlife. So anyway, that said, we do want to make this our home one day. We live downtown. Um, a little bit about us is we have three kids. Um, biologically, we're a foster family. So we usually uh, often have a fourth child. So eventually we will permanently have a fourth child maybe one day. Um, we also have... Um, two elderly parents that we just moved here next door. So we're a pretty big family. Um, so hopefully if we can find the means, um, we will come to you again and ask for an increased home size. But we feel like we should say that in advance now. Um, you know, but that's once we know that we have a septic permit from you all and we have a habitable home, and then we can start to talk about rehabbing the home, bringing it up to code, cleaning it out. And we would obviously start with the expansion of the home, probably most likely through the attic and creating like a another bedroom upstairs. Um, the home has four tiny bedrooms. And I know that we are asking for a septic that can handle um, seven bedrooms, but our thought is to ask and have overcapacity rather than under when you start to talk about 
for kids, in-laws, and a guest space. So um, yeah, Northampton is our home. Our businesses are here. And I just hope you consider this application favorably and come visit the farm in 10 years and pick some pawpaws. And, and, and if I can add, even if we find ourselves not having the means to expand the home or otherwise not obtaining the necessary approvals to expand the home, because we fully recognize it would not be by right. We'd have to come before you. We'd have to come, <laughs> excuse me, before planning, et cetera. Um, but we, we know all of that. Even if we end up not being able to do that, we would still rather have a septic system that has overcapacity mm -hmm. and can serve us well in the long term so we don't find ourselves having to deal with repairs because we're just at the very edge of what we really need, right? Uh, so no matter what, we'd rather do the proper investment up front so that we do it once and we do it right. We also feel it's the responsible thing to do in terms of the quality of the groundwater. Can you uh, sum summarize the work that you plan? Uh, as part of this application, our intent is to install a septic system, which unfortunately requires some mounding. Um, that mounding naturally requires compensatory storage, uh, which we are unable to provide on the property at the same elevations, but are able to provide on the property at the same elevations or below in a manner that still freely drains into the same direction. And uh, our intent uh, uh, our, our intent would be to effectively scrape a foot of land off of the back side of the field in a manner that works with the existing topography so that it, the, the hydrology, it, the big picture of the hydrology uh, still continues flowing in the same direction. Now, is there, uh, um, and you've just described uh, farmland, and it seems like uh, taking away a foot of land over an extended period is removing a lot of topsoil. Have you considered any alternatives? Um, the topsoil is so dead over there. I mean, not to, not, to, I mean, the soil is so overworked down in that part of the field. Um, lots of, regeneration is going to have to happen in order to make that like a really beautiful farmland again. Um, uh, our, our intent is to continue rebuilding the soil. Our intent is to transition the field to no-till practices and practices that increase ecological regeneration and increase access to wildlife and, and reduce uh, inputs, uh, also in terms of water, also in terms of, of other materials um, and we recognize that removing a foot of topsoil is not necessarily the best practice, but we also recognize that what's been going on over there for the last several decades isn't exactly the best practice. And this is not being critical of former owners. It's just a nature, the nature of how things used to be done. And, and, and we are committed to rebuilding the soil in the long term, whether it's at grade, whether it's what is grade now or whether it's a foot below. Questions from commissioners? Yes. Nathan. I got a, more than a few concerns. Um, one is a note on the uh, septic plan that um, the entire properties within the 100 year flood zone, um, but they're not tied into the uh, flood elevation data. A project where you're Doing work in bordering land subject to flooding, it's imperative that you be in the flood zone data. Um, otherwise, we have nothing really to go on. Uh, uh, the, the house itself, I'm guessing, is also yeah. in the honey oh, yeah. year plain. Um, and if they're going to expand it by three or four bedrooms, um, way i mean there's there's no detail on the house expansion um, mm -hmm. and uh, how much area that's going to take up and then um, if they've got other outbuildings on the property that could be you know within the same area that they want to take the uh the uh that story flood story uh, they could be using things by vents that allow flood waters to go into areas that would otherwise be I, um, but I don't know any of this because it, it 
mm. not enough detail for me to, to make it. So, so I don't, I don't know the exact amount that's being filled in. I don't know. <laughs> Just uh, DEP went to a system where if you fill in at a certain elevation in the floodplain, you have to take out at that same elevation. And put, put. If you go below that, uh, and this is the reason they went to this system, you went below that, as soon as you had a flood in that area filled in, it's no longer cold storage. It's no longer acting as cold storage. That's why they went to a foot foot program. Um, and the information that I see from the um, guy that did the septic design, I don't see where that can happen. But then again, you, you don't have elevation on the whole property. So I don't know if there's a higher section of the property in the back where you could get this out of. Um, and I can understand your concerns because the, the septic system you have now is, is I don't even think meets today's Title V. Uh, they, I don't think they no longer use cesspools and you you would have to have a, a septic system anyways for what you've got now. Well, there's there's some information that that's not here that. And I think we're not saying that you're not going to get a permit. What we're saying is there's probably some more information that we need to make a, a fair conclusion that'll help you. Maybe may we answer those very good questions? Thank you. So the, the first, uh, not necessarily in the order of the questions, but number one, importantly, the septic at uh, drawing itself from the septic designer does note the mound fill calculations. So there is a table that notes the mound fill calculations, excuse me, for for the um, leach field mound. So that is that is absolutely part of the application. Number two, regarding the expansion uh, to the home, that is a potential future expansion and a potential future application. It is absolutely not part of this current application. In order to submit for that application, we'd need to spend quite a bit of money on the necessary design professionals and their services in order to be able to come before you with an adequate application. And we simply don't have the finances to make that investment before knowing that the home has even any kind of value in terms of residential real estate. Right now, it does not. And we bought the property with quite a bit of risk. Um, and simply because of the fact that the existing septic system is not a septic system by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, and what's been going on at the property for decades in terms of impacts on groundwater quality are something that I'd much rather not get into in too much detail. Uh, it's, it's quite literally a trench full of gravel where the sewage went. That's all oh, it yeah. is. Right. Okay. Well, we, would, we would still need to be tied into the flood data, and it's as simple as as your what, what your septic guy did was he stuck a nail on the tree, called it a hundred, and, and did the elevations. Exactly. What he exactly. has to do is he has to take that elevation on that nail and tie it into a city benchmark, and there's got to be one down here somewhere, which you could probably get from the city uh, building inspector. And once he knew, knows that elevation, then he, all the elevations he took, he can get into the city, I mean, the, the flood zone data. That would, that would solve my problem. But, uh, yeah, uh, that's a reasonable, that's a reasonable uh, uh, topic. And we actually know that there is uh, a municipal point not too far away. Um, the issue that I've been having, quite frankly, is I've been chasing surveyors for about six months, trying to get them to do a proper topo that will key in that nail on the tree. And I can't get anybody to do the work. And the only person that even responded to any of my advances is, uh, is the surveyor that did the plot plan for the closing. And I keep on getting from him, you're on my schedule, you're on my schedule, I'll get there. With all that said, all that said, I fully recognize that as part of a future application, for potential interaction with the home and structures, we would absolutely need a proper survey that includes 
elevations. Uh, we know that we're on the schedule to make that happen. And we were hopeful, perhaps optimistically and foolishly hopeful, <laughs> that given that the entire property, indeed the entire first floor of the home that exists, uh, is within the floodplain, so we're all underwater no matter what. Are we five foot above or five foot below? To what extent that does or does not matter, I truly don't know. I'm not a hydrologist. Um, but we were hopeful that given that we're not trying to seek any discounts, so to speak, due to the fact that perhaps portions of the property are not within the floodplain, and rather we're simply accepting the fact that the entire property, the entire neighborhood is within the flood zone. And uh, we were hopeful that that specific issue might not be relevant to this application because we're effectively treating it as a worst case scenario anyway. That was our- But we did not approach. Approach. Yeah. Because it's, you know, in all, in all honesty, like, yes, we, we want the property as is and we can make it work, but long-term eventually we would hope to come back before you if this- so, Understand that. What, I think what yeah. mentioned out pointing, yeah, it's, it's just unfortunate that anything that's in the floodplain really requires good elevations um, for us to make a good decision. And it may help you out. You may find areas that indeed you can do your whole project, um, including expansion of the house and everything, and uh, there won't be a problem. Uh, uh, unfortunately, there isn't enough elevation in the property to to let us uh, to let us uh, you know go wild with our with our fantasies. We, we'd have to do a lot of work to make any of that even remotely possible. Um, right. uh, you did mention outbuildings. Uh, we 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 also want to respect that that statement that you made. Uh, there is there was an existing barn on the property that was removed a couple of years before we purchased it. And um, there was a large greenhouse on the property. It was removed just before closing. This would be December almost a year ago. And there is still one greenhouse on the property. Uh, the location of that greenhouse actually conflicts with the mound for the leach field. <laughs> Excuse me. And and you might see in the first page of the drawing. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, that it will it will be removed ahead ahead of any work. There's also a very small shed on the property that, that will eventually get removed anyway. Its its size is negligible in terms of use, and we would actually have to remove it. And hopefully that too, perhaps one day, can give us some credit. And when when we come before you in the future with with a different application altogether. Well, the thing is, it has to be measured up now before it's removed. It, so that's why we're record, doing this We would have a record of it and could use it as comp storage, um, at least some of it, depending on how flowable it is. Watertight, then the whole area within the building would be compared to comp storage. Otherwise, it would just be like the thickness of the walls at, at the certain elevations. But even that adds up if you have enough over buildings does, on the side does the house meet flood code currently like does it have flow through vents and and then any other features that's, that's another way to achieve storage the, house, also. the house is completely uninhabitable it was it was a squatter home for years and years and years it's doesn't meet any code so it's basically going to be removed no 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 oh. we, we would we, we would we would let we we actually feel that the the structurally interestingly and surprisingly we feel that structurally it's sound and um, we would not move to remove it we might find that from a cost perspective it might be beneficial to remove it and rebuild on the same footprint but that's a that's yeah, a technical okay. matter that 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 wouldn't impact but but no it's it still has knob oh, and yeah. tube in it and it absolutely does not comply with current uh, current requirements and regulations right but actually it may impact the future of the property if you want to expand your home. You're going to have to measure that house up. It's going to need elevations relative to the floodplain elevation. What this is pointing out is that uh, the regulations require us uh, to look for compensatory storage uh, per uh, at each foot of elevation. Um, and so to, to dig a hole below a given level uh, while that logically says, oh, well, then the flood would have some place to go. That's not what the regulations require for us to make a determination. Um, so it, there have been occasions in the past where this commission has allowed uh, uh, the creation of storage below a given elevation. 
but that's after we've had all of the data in front of us. Um, and right now we don't have any of that data. And that's what uh, Mason is pointing out, that we don't, we don't have the information that we would usually use uh, to make a determination of whether to, uh, to, to grant this or not. Um, so I'm interested in other comments by uh, commissioners, but one thought is uh, to ask you to come back to us with the, the information that we would normally expect to have before we could rule on this kind of a request. But uh, first, other other commissioners, any any additional comments or questions? Um, just a quick question. The, the elevations that are shown on the, um, I mean, basically there's, are those five foot or one foot? One, one, one foot increments. And they come from a combination of state GIS and municipal maps available online that regenerative, excuse me, regenerative design group out of Greenfield put together for us. That's that's the source for those topos that you're looking at. Okay, and, and so essentially, there's there's like zero elevation change <laughs> there's, there's, from roughly the back of the where the blue thing is on the map all the way down to uh, the foot of, of where you'd be digging it. Um, I, I I have so so I'm I'm less concerned about the elevation of of compensatory storage. I think it's it's close, um, and and nothing we do is perfectly allowed it in the past. I do think having the elevations, the surveys tied to um, the floodplain datum is important. Plus, to to let you know whether or not how correct this is. Um, then then I I did have one question, and that's kind of the only issue that I have. Um, the other the other question I have is, is you know, the location of, I, I'm wondering why you just moved it up on your property rather than pushing it back, given that it does at the very back end of your property, it looks like it does slope down slightly. Um, yeah. um, you mean the compensatory storage or the- Yeah, yeah, where the compensatory storage is. Why didn't you push it all the way to the back of the property just for- Oh, why? Yeah, why? You mean why? why? Right. No, no, there's not. Why is it located mean, where it is? <laughs> Oh well, we, actually, the the reason the reason we thought that that kind of more western portion of the property would be the appropriate one is because that's the direction that all the water flows based on a being on site and observing it, and b the topos that we do have in hand. Uh, so, given that's where the water goes, we figured that would be not a completely foolish place to start off with. Um. Okay, and then are you thinking that that yeah, if in, in the future, and again, it doesn't apply to this application, but in the future, you'd be able to expand that space. Um, so in in the future, if 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 we were to be so lucky to come before you for another application, we imagine a first of all, yes, absolutely, by then having a proper topo that shows all of the current existing conditions tied into the datum. That's number one, and number two, uh, expanding that that area as necessary to the east, but also more importantly, perhaps, at the home site area, we have a teeny bit more elevation that we also might be able to remove to help with the compensation, um, but it's sufficiently nuanced that and sufficiently cl close to the structure that we didn't want to start playing with that at this point because we simply don't have a qualified survey at the chose topo line. Yeah, plus it probably require removal of some of those structures. <laughs> and we're, we're we're imagining all of those yeah. structures going in. Yeah, but like, that that right. that again, I can I can see why you do that a little further down the road. Okay, thank you. You. Questions or comments from commissioners? No, I really don't have anything to add. Because it seems like the the question before the commission is do we uh, make a ruling with incomplete information uh, that we would normally expect to have before making this type of, of a ruling? Um, and uh, I guess the one argument would be that, well, it's a relatively flat land. There isn't gonna be that much new information that a proper uh, tying in to floodplain data would, uh, wouldn't be that more that much more dramatic in our understanding. Um, so uh, on the other hand, technically, we're supposed to <laughs> we're supposed to have the data before we make the ruling. So 
um, what what do the rest of the commission think about um, that kind of a dilemma? We, we you know, normally when we've allowed below uh, uh, below level uh, storage as compensatory storage, um, it's been with all the data in front of us, and we don't have that data now. Were there DEP comments on the uh, on the floodplain stuff? Yeah, so DEP's yeah. comment was that uh, the plan acknowledges that the site is within BLSF. Um, some other things that don't apply. Blah, blah, blah. The applicant needs to quantify the area of work as well as volumes at each one foot increment. Please note the area may need to be surveyed for elevation. FEMA map study is based on the NGBD 29 datum, and if any other datum is used, there is a con correction factor that must be applied. So um, basically the same thing that you had noted, Mason. Okay. Um Oh, it's, it seems like both DEP and me need that information. And um, I wouldn't be adverse to doing um, this hearing until we, until we get there. I'll just drop it and have them refile all over again. Yeah, I'm, I'm inclined to ask for more complete information just so we don't get in the habit of saying, well, we'll disregard this because it probably isn't that big a deal. Um, uh, that's a that's a slippery slope. Um, I don't know what the other commissioners think, but I mean, this is one where it probably, probably isn't gonna be that dramatic in changing our understanding to have that additional information. On the other hand- uh, Well, on the other hand, you don't wanna get into a, a little contest with DP either. Yes, no, that's <laughs> so I guess uh I'll ask the applicants uh uh how much of a um of, of an undertaking would it be to try and pull that together for us and come back. Uh, so we, yeah. we we've been trying to get a survey. We're, we're supposedly on schedule to get the survey, the surveyor out there to complete the work. Um, I we want to do it in any case in anticipation of another future uh, application and presentation before this committee. Uh, so it's something we're planning on doing anyway. Um, so uh, you know we also recognize the fact. That, that there is a distinction between what the state requires, if you will, at the per foot elevation fill versus yeah. what the commission versus what the commission is willing to enforce and consider. And we really appreciate that mm -hmm. flexibility. Uh, so the answer is yes, we're going to go ahead and get a survey done no matter what. Uh, we were hoping to get an approval from you all before that happens, but we are going to go ahead uh, and approval at least for on the septic. Uh, before that, but we're we are going to go ahead and get a, a survey done with one foot increment topos either way. Um, and uh, your dilemma is that you you've tried but can't come up with a time frame for that. Right? We we simply don't have a time frame for it. Uh, on I mean, it, unfortunately, I'm seeing this in all kinds of walks of my professional life right now. Uh, lots of no callbacks and lots of callbacks that are not functional and then the callbacks that supposedly are end up dragging on and on and on. It's I think something a lot of people are seeing in a lot of industries. Uh, so um you know we seem to be paying the personal price for that right now. I I I again not being a hydrologist um and recognizing that the entire property is uh well below uh, and within the floodplain um and that you know that the 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 topography is relatively what it is based on the state GIS and based on municipal topos, admittedly from 65, but nevertheless, um, you know, I think we all kind of know we're not going to learn all that much from new from new updated surveys, but we're definitely not in a position to uh, hem and holler about it. We right. will we will bow our head before the, the committee's decision. Absolutely. <laughs> I guess one question we didn't ask. I mean, is there a need to get this approved right away? Uh, or is it just more of you want to have confidence that you can move forward with this as you think about what else you're doing with the property? The, the, the advantage of getting approval on the septic system 
uh, gives us a sense of confidence that the risk that we took in acquiring this property, the financial risk that we took in acquiring this property, and at this point, having sat on it for approximately nine months, is, is better than four acres of field. Um, because until we have a permit for a septic system, that's all this property can be. And we fully recognize that and, you know, we can't get too creative around that one. Uh, so, but however, that said, we're talking about our personal sense of comfort and confidence. We're not talking about a critical path towards advancing this effort. Okay. Yeah, because then, then I definitely lean towards getting the, the survey done and, and recognizing that, you know, you've heard that we can't promise you what we will state at, the, at that point in time. But, you know, the, the concerns that you've heard are primarily about tying this um, to uh, the, the floodplain. Can, can I ask actually a question, a technical question about that? Um, should I succeed in getting the septic designer to write a note or add a note to the existing drawing as being successfully tying their 100 foot datum to the other relevant datum would that be something that the uh, committee would consider or would that be insufficient due to the fact that they did not survey the whole property mason you've got 49 yes. years on this <laughs> <laughs> well the, the, the uh, my thoughts on getting a complete survey was so that there may be areas on the property that are going to help out um I know it's the meadows um, drops down towards the river, but um, I don't know. There may be old mounds there that we don't know about, or the big area up around the house may be high enough so they take a little bit out of there. But I don't know. I, mean, and I think we'd have to understand. In answer to your question, we'd have to understand. Um, not only the area around the mound, but the area that you're using for compensatory storage. Uh, we'd, we'd need to have the data points for that as well. So yes, essentially the whole four acres. Understood, thank you. And Jonathan, if you're going to be required to get a flood elevation certificate, you'll need a surveyor to fill that out for you in any case. Um, you will at some point. I don't know if it will be triggered due to the length of, uh, non-occupancy of the house. Oh, okay. But is, is, mm -hmm. is that something that, that this committee deals with or is that something that a, a different mm -hmm. regulatory entity? Uh, uh, that's primarily through the building department. So they wouldn't be okay. able to issue you a certificate of occupancy in most cases. So it's, um, okay. That's been completed. Un okay. Until a surveyor signs off on that. Yeah, so there's a Understood. specific uh, FEMA form that they would have to fill out. Understood. Thank you. Thank you for that heads up. I appreciate it. So if I'm assessing the, the sense of the committee uh, that it would be best to continue this case until you've been able to assemble a survey that we can present us, present us uh, with the floodplain data. Someone we'll be back. To the, all right. Someone want to make a motion um, to that effect? So we and, do and need this... to continue to a time and date certain. So I, I don't know if uh -huh. what might be realistic for you. And we can always bounce it again if yes. you still have problems. Continue. But I, you know, we don't want to go a year <laughs> and have that be too long. Hey, Mason, do you know any surveyors that are available to do work? I used to be one, <laughs> but I don't do that work. I'm not a licensed surveyor, but I work for one. We'll, we'll um, um... And they're they're Take no longer in business, unfortunately. I, I think that I think that we don't we don't want to waste anybody's time, including Sarah, your time, and needing to continually bounce this forward. So I, I would recommend that we don't look at a date any less than two months away. That's what I was um, going to ask. Whether you wanted two or three months or six months, and, or yeah. And I mean, let's if if it's okay, two two months and. We'll okay. work a bit more aggressively can, to try and get that done. We can do that. that sounds good. Two months, three months, whatever you'd prefer. How about two and a half? Okay. <laughs> so Thanks. we're we're looking at uh, September, October, sometime in early November. Or no, uh, it's November 9th. Okay. 
So someone when I make a motion to continue this case to the 9th of November, presumably at 5.30, first up. Sure, so moved. And a second? Second. By Jen. All in favor, need a roll call, Sarah? Roll call, David? Uh, yes. Randy? Yes. Jen? Yes. Mason? Yes. And Kevin? Thank you. Sorry, but I think that's the best way for us to proceed. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Good Bye. luck. Yeah. All right. Next case is uh, determination of applicability to determine if removal and management of non native invasive plant species is subject to the Wetlands Act or the Wetlands Ordinance. Uh, this by the Lathrop Communities on um, Florence Road. Uh, Bridge Road um, and Florence Road. Um, who's here to speak to that? I'm not seeing Barbara, who was uh, who I was expecting to be the one to present this. Um, well, I looked. I looked over the. You mean the, the program that they had before on pages yeah. and pages and very thorough and. Uh, that is great. I have no, I have no problem giving them another five-year plan. I agree. I, they've been very thorough in all their past dealings with us and preparation of materials and the demonstration and follow-up and work, uh, photographic evidence of success and all that sort of stuff. So I have complete yeah. confidence that they'll be doing a good job this time too. Yeah, and it's very consistent with what they've done in the past, which I have no concerns with. So. Good. Um, so for that, Sarah, what do we need to say? Uh, um, this would be this is a negative determination. Um, so this would be you'll find it negative two. Checkbox two indicate that the work is within an area subject to protection, yeah. but will not dredge full or alter. Yeah, and two because because it's a riverfront. Um, I I know that Lathrop would love to present this to the commission, so I can certainly invite them back at a future meeting, regardless of the permit. The, both of these are areas on which the conservation commission holds the uh, restriction. Right, and uh, it's always been enjoyable to have them come before us and talk about what they're doing. So. Uh, That'd be fine, but for now, um, let's. Uh, uh, if someone can make a motion to issue a negative determination checkbox two. So moved. And a second. Second. David, all in favor, Sarah. All right. So roll call. David. Yes. Randy. Yes. Jen. Yes. Mason. Yes. And Kevin. Yes. All right. Unanimous. Thank you. Very good. And we uh, the next case was six o'clock, so we're already past that time. So this is a notice of intent for improvements to existing driveway and creation of an eight space parking area to serve the Mill Hill, uh, Mineral Hills Greenway and related stormwater improvements. Uh, this is at uh, Turkey Hill Road. Um, and who's here to speak to that? Hi, I'm Terry Reynolds, T. Reynolds Engineering representing Rebecca Allen and Roland Oliet. Uh, with me uh, here is Elena Zachary from Regenerative Design Group, and she's going to speak to our revegetation efforts out there. Um, if I can share my screen, I'll put up a plan to show you, go over what we're proposing. Sure. Yeah, you should be able to do that. Okay. So this is the existing conditions for the site. Um, it consists of three lots. Basically, um, we've got Mineral Hills Conservation Area over in this area. We have uh, 320 Turkey Hill Road here that is a partially built um, condominium apartment development. And then 332, which is up here um, uh, with a, an existing road that was built up to the top of the hill. Um, the resources resource areas we're talking about that are being impacted um, 
we have a riverfront, which is shown as the offset off of this bank delineation here. And it comes out generally out to here, comes around and up like here. And basically generally encompasses this whole lower driveway area. And then we have a wetland system here at the curve in the driveway. So we have buffer zone on the driveway here. Okay. Um, this was, as many of you probably know, was an old gravel pit. Mm -hmm. um, very controversial in the day. Um, and since then, um, the city permitted the development of this of this site. Um, and so it was permitted to have a development here, another house over here, and another house up at the top. Um, and since that was done, this piece, this is uh, what was considered lot two, has been purchased and is now part of the conservation area of Mineral Hills. Um, so since since all that has happened, um, you know, following the initial permitting, this road was built. And so this has been here since around 2007, 2008. Um, at the time, it was not permitted as a riverfront project. And it really, uh, they did not know, they weren't aware of the wetlands up in this area either. Um, so this is, this is kind of an existing uh, road here um degraded uh down in here so this is being approached as a redevelopment project um so i'll just go ahead and show you what's being proposed so mm -hmm. what's being proposed in, in a layout sense is a house to be built up here the completion of two more townhouse con apartment units down here associated stormwater um septics and then a, a parking lot for the conservation area. Um, so, um, and what that's gonna mean is there's, the the road was only built uh, just with crushed stone. Um, it was built generally as proposed, but um, it's not, it's, it's very stable, but it's not stable in a way that's gonna take regular traffic. Um, going up and down. Um, the whole road, this entire area was generally built with one to one and a half inch stone across the, the level surface here, um, all the way to the top of the hill. So what's being proposed, as you may see, is to, starting at the bottom, um, is to develop this parking area that will be an official parking area four mineral hills, eight spaces right in here, a parallel space here, a little stormwater management area with a, a little water quality swale feeding into it that will just take sheet flow off these parking spaces in here. This area is contained and generally it will infiltrate and then it will overflow over here and through a slot here for large events. Um, this was a pond that was originally approved under the, in the original permitting. This has been altered slightly, uh, brought back into the bank, moved out a little further out of the um, riverfront area. Um, it's been designed a, a little a little more uh, environmentally sensitive, putting in an engineered media in the bottom. Um, it'll be planted with wildflowers in here. Um, the driveway coming up the hill, as you can see, has grading to ensure that the runoff comes off into a, a swale on the on the edge here. That was originally proposed. It was not detailed very well in the original permitting, um, but it was generally built as proposed. It was proposed with culverts here, um, uh, right here taking the storm water off, off the drive here and here. Um, so, uh, and, and that has worked relatively well, but the, the, 
the the swales need to be maintained and and part of this project is to really establish them and then um, create better controls by putting in check dams, vegetating them properly. Um, and then down in this lower area, um, putting in the basin that was originally proposed um, and then installing additional water quality in there and ensuring that it actually infiltrates the water coming off the hill better. And then for this development going into that. Um, so um, from a impact uh, respect here, um, this area is fairly degraded. The existing areas of de degraded areas within the riverfront is about 23,786 uh, square feet. Um, following the development, these areas here hatched horizontally. That's the existing degraded area. These will be loamed and seeded so that those will, will be vegetated appropriately after the development. Um, the the edge of this road, the whole roadway is going to be narrowed down and then vegetated both in this in the swale and along the shoulders all the way up. Um, invasives are going to be removed. There's some knotweed that's been growing up here and there and then some other plants that Lena can talk about. Um, there's a lot of woody vegetation growing in these swales that needs to be removed. And so that's gonna be removed and then it will be revegetated re accordingly. Um, so uh, the stormwater management, you know, stormwater analysis has been performed for the entire uh, site, including the house up top. Um, this was permitted with an original stormwater permit in 2007. An amended permit has been approved by DPW for the stormwater for this new overall build out. Um, and uh, with that, I, I'd like to turn it over to Elena and let her tell you a little bit about um, our, our efforts to revegetate and and do the vegetation control in those in those areas. If she's here. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks Terry. Um, that was a great explanation. Um, our main focus um, for this meeting is the um, revegetation around the parking area um, and along the driveway shoulders. So we've chosen um, a seed mix from New England wetland plants for the square footage that will be disturbed around the parking. Um, we'll also be planting with plugs from New England wetland plants. Um, the a uh, mix of plugs is listed on the planting plan for, for this. Um, so our our aim there is to revegetate with some quick growing plants um, like willows that will be um, hopefully somewhat competitive against some knotweed, which is down in that area, um, bittersweet, um, and also some uh, bitter um, multiflora rose down there. So we're really hoping to um, to revegetate with some some good native plants. Um, and then along the shoulders, we have a um, different mix that is suitable for partially faded roadsides. That's an Ernst seeds mix, which has uh, quite a variety of seeds that we will not be planting with plugs. Um, but our near-term management um, plan for that is to cut back some of the vegetation that's currently growing there. There's a lot of woodies that are growing up in the in the swale. So, um, in preparation for construction and sort of allowing a little bit more visibility along the roadsides, those will be cut down but not removed by root. So the, the root systems will stay in place. Um, and then once the, the roads are um, stabilized and more of the construction is complete, at that point, um, we plan to um, fully, fully revegetate the, the swales by adding topsoil and a seed mix. Um, and we'll be, uh, regenerative design group will be overseeing the install of this and as well as um, coming monthly at least for inspections along the shoulders and the, the uh, replanted area around the parking for any invasives um, 
we'll start with manual removal, um, especially if we're coming monthly, hopefully we'll be able to nip things in the bud. Um, and we'll also be checking for any sedimentation issues um, in those areas. Um, I think I'll pause there and see if you have any other questions. When we were walking out there a few days ago, uh, you certainly have a robust uh, crop of multiflora rose and uh, bittersweet. Um, uh, is there a, how, how complete do you expect the removal process to do before you start reseeding and um, adding plugs? And how far into the, uh, off that road, how far off of the road do, uh, do you plan to do that? Uh, we plan to keep the limit of disturbance as, as small as possible. So um, the edge of that dotted line um, and the, the dark hashed area on the plan there is where we'll, we'll kind of hope to keep to that. Once, once the area has been cleared a little bit with some of that shrub, we'll see how much beyond that edge there's more invasives. And if there's a little bit more farther in, we'll do our best to remove those as well. Um, from what I've seen from walking farther down the trail, um, you know, most of the invasives are concentrated along that edge, which we will be pushing back. Um, so we're hoping to remove as much as we can. Um, and of course, disposing of that properly so that the does not further spread those um, plant pieces. This is by far not a complete invasives removal. Um, there's significant invasives all along in this area here that we just it, we won't be able to get at. Um, so we're really going to be focusing on our disturbance areas the best we can and trying to establish those in a way that we can, you know, uh, kind of control the amount, but we're by no means going to be able to get rid of it all. How steep are the road side slopes and uh, are they going to require, say, a, an erosion control blanket uh, after you seed? It, anything three to one and over is going to receive a, an erosion control blanket. The parking area down below is is not steep. It's mostly just as the driveway ascends that it has the steep shoulders. Yeah, the we've got some shoulders along the swales uh, that will will be needing some uh, erosion control blankets uh, in this area here, for instance. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, out of the jurisdictional areas up in here, we're going to need some, and then certainly uh, in the upper upland area development. There'll be some. Um, yeah, I see a number of check dams in the swale there. Um, due to yeah, the steepness we, of the climb. There. Yes, the, this it's a it's a it's a rather steep driveway. We have we've tried to keep the driveway under ten percent, but you know at ten percent. But there are areas that are certainly steeper, um, especially down here where this wetland is. Um, we couldn't we couldn't do much to address that without creating a much bigger impact in that area. Um, so, Is that a single house going up top there. It's a two family, yeah. Be an exciting drive in the winter. Yes, right yes, <laughs> it will be. Um, this seems like. Keeping invasives at bay and uh, keeping the planned uh, native species intact, it's going to be, if not Sisyphean, at least a continuous effort for ever. Um, yeah. Uh, and is, is there a, a plan for a uh, maintenance plan to go with the deed or in some way obligate any owner, no matter what, to... Uh, 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 continue with the, the maintenance practices? Well, the, the invasives are, are mostly limited to the lower area, which ends up being the uh, Mineral Hills Conservation Area, which is city land. Um, so, uh, you know, that's, that's not so much in their control. Um, they are very acutely aware of uh, the upland areas. Uh, along the driveway um, and that they, you know, fortunately there's 
not a lot of invasives up there. there there's relatively few. Um, it's it's mostly down down in the parking area, down in the, in the the lower area there. And from the city side, we try to focus our efforts on areas where we can have the most effect with invasives control. Um, the this area is so rife with invasives that have been there for such a long time that we haven't done any treatment here. Um, some has occurred along the trails, but immediately in in the entrance, it's it, it's right. pretty infested. The, the the parking lot construction will take out a pretty significant chunk of of invasives, uh -huh. but you know it it goes well beyond that. Uh, Terry, could you talk about the O and M going forward for the stormwater features and who will be responsible for what and how that's defined? Yeah, so the O and M, um, so the city would be responsible for for the little area off the parking lot, um, this area here. Um, Mike Bianis owns owns this, so this development would be responsible for the ongoing maintenance of this basin. So that will include. Uh, just inspections for to you know banks and and everything in here to make sure you're not getting any erosion in it. Uh, cleanouts of any possible collection of of sand or sediment coming into it, and then the annual uh, knockdown of vegetation in here to prevent woody growth in that basin area. Um, the plowing and so on. Uh, the owners of 332 have volunteered that they will be doing the plowing of the parking lot and the drive. And then they will be doing the uh, maintenance of sweeping as needed up the parking lot and the driveway also. Would that um, um, include a provision in the deed that obligates a future owner, so we're not just dependent on the goodwill of the current owner. Yes, um, that is in the stormwater management um, that it transfers from who is the current owner to whoever is the subsequent. Good. Other questions from commissioners? If not, uh, someone want to make a motion to close the hearing? First, I should say, uh, any other public comments? I don't know if anybody else who's tuning in uh, has a question or comment. If not, uh, Sarah, anything you want to add before we close the hearing? Uh, I don't think so. Um, I guess I noted in my staff report that this is a very disturbed area. It's a little bit unique and you know, it's, it's such the in an area that's in such the outskirts of the city. Um, you know, a lot of this work wouldn't be permitted unless it were in disturbed areas, but it, it's really limited to the existing footprint. Um, should create really an overall improvement for the city area at the bottom of the hill, both for stormwater treatment and for the parking situation. Um, I, I guess that's it. Um, it you know, everything had been permitted previously. I think this application really expands and provides additional details and treatment on things that were already allowed. There was a DEP comment looking for uh, the creation of, and maintenance of a log book. Uh, uh, I don't know if the applicant has considered that. Is it, if the uh, the obligation? Uh, I assume in the I should go back and look at the question that DEP raised, but detailing maintenance done on the approved stormwater best management practices as this requirement is frequently not done by the owner of record for the stormwater system. So um, and maybe that's addressed by the question I asked earlier about, yes, this will be an obligation that will transfer to a future. Yeah, owner. I mean, this is reflecting the unfortunate reality that, that most people either don't do the maintenance of the stormwater systems or don't report back when it is done. 
I believe, uh, Terry, are, these are necessary to achieve stormwater credit, correct? Uh, stormwater, yes. If, if, I believe, um, yes, these practices are eligible for the stormwater credit. Okay. Um, yeah, so that provides a little bit more of an incentive for property owners because their, their stormwater fees are reduced uh, in exchange for appropriate maintenance of the stormwater systems going forward. So that, that's a little bit of an, an added. Yeah, the, storm, for them to it. the stormwater Document permit, the, the stormwater permit basically that gets recorded requires an annual report an inspection of the stormwater facilities um, as laid out in 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 the in the manual part of uh, the compliance with the approved permit is to submit the maintenance in in the format that gets recorded at the registry yeah, i think dep was just noting that no matter what the requirement it typically doesn't happen and and that's a reality we don't receive yeah. the reports that we're supposed yeah. to yeah. If, if there is annual reporting required though i don't think requiring a log book is going to make any, any yeah, more of a difference. Any big difference. Uh, and the, the stormwater permit did come in just prior to the meeting, but it does include additional conditions like um, retention of a project engineer to document construction right. of the stormwater system. Um, so things that ensure that the, the work will actually meet the stormwater standards as proposed. And, and right. these these folks are, are very dedicated to really doing a, a significant improvement and an ongoing you know, management. So now the application it, looked that way. Yeah. All right. Someone want to make a motion to close the hearing? Moved. And a second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Uh, roll call. Sarah. Roll call. David. Yes. Randy. Yes. Jen. Yes. Mason. Yes. And Kevin. Yes. Unanimous. Um, so, um, seems like overall a, a good thing. Um, it's just a question of, we want to ensure that the conditions, um, in the stormwater permit are, are followed. Any other special conditions, um, that we want to add besides the standard conditions? None that I can think of. If not, uh, so, uh, one want to make it a motion to grant an order of conditions um, in satisfaction of this application. A moved. And a second. Second. Any further discussion? If not, um, all in favor, Sarah. David. Yes. Randy. Yes. Jen. Yes. Mason? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. Very good. Good luck to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. And we also have a request for a certificate of compliance on Blackberry Lane. Um, and this is Going back to 2008, Sarah, I can't Yeah, it is. I... I was I was a little bit surprised that this was um, a notice of intent rather than a request for determination. So there's a there's a drainage structure that clearly used to be a stream before that neighborhood was created that emerges on the lot line in between six, 68 Blackberry and the adjacent parcel, just right in the middle of the lawn. This pops out of the ground and is in a, a cement channel. But you know that that is considered bank, and that is a resource area. So the the order permitted um, repair of a stone wall within the the buffer zone to the to that intermittent stream, as well as um, construction of a, a like a sunroom type thing on top of an existing structure. And I visited; it looks to like it was just as proposed. I couldn't find any plans at all uh, in the files. There were some photographs to go by, but it, it didn't seem to make sense to require the applicant to put, to put together an as-built plan for a project like this one. Um, and, and also I'd, 
we should note to the applicant that the, the deed does need to include the language regarding the presence of resource areas that, that was required as an ongoing condition and it was not done when the current owners purchased the property. So I, they just didn't know this permit existed, I don't think. I see. I don't know if I was on the commission at, for this. This doesn't ring a bell to me. I don't know if it rings a bell to you, Mason. Oh, there's been so many. <laughs> in 48 years or however many years you've been doing this oh. um, all right someone want to make a motion to grant an order of conditions uh certificate of compliance sorry <laughs> certificate of compliance thank you sir so moved and a second second any further discussion if not, all in favor, roll call. Roll call. David? Yes. Randy? Yes. Jen? Yes. Mason? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. Great, unanimous.